So this is the brand new Instinct 3 crossover AMOLED, a unit that takes the existing Instinct crossover watch from a couple years ago with its analog hands, merges it with the brand new Instinct 3 AMOLED lineup, and calls it macaroni. Also, every single light that you see here is illuminated by some sort of Garmin flashlight. Uh, and there's a reason why I'm out here in the woods. Actually, there's three reasons. I'm gonna get to all three of those reasons in just a second. Now, while I've started putting this watch through its paces, I've got plenty more testing I wanna do. So in the meantime, I wanna dive into all the things that make this watch different compared to the past. Now, the first thing about this watch is, is the crossover lineup. So crossover is a bit different in Garmin's lineup, but that actually has true analog hands. You see those hands on the front there? Those hands allow to move out of the way for different widgets, those hands give it that classical analog watch feel, but at the same time they blend it with the display. In the past it was a MIP-based display, our memory and pixel display, and now it's a full AMOLED display. Generally speaking, an AMOLED display is more brilliant from a color standpoint, but generally speaking, consumes more battery life. In any case, with the crossover, they use those analog hands in different ways. In some of the menus, for example, they just simply move out of the way and they're flat across like you see right there. But in other cases, they use them as part of like the interface. So for example, in the steps page here, you'll see it'll go and show my steps for the day. In the case of the compass field, it'll rotate to show the north direction and so on. There's a lot of these little touches here and there throughout the menus. Some people might find this gimmicky. Some people might find it cool. I think it's generally pretty cool and it's executed super well. So then with that basics out of the way, let's talk about what's new in this watch starting off on the hardware side. The very first thing is the inclusion of a flashlight. So I can double tap the upper left hand button and you see, boom, a flashlight. Now there is four levels of white brightness. There we go. And there's one level of red brightness. However, the tactical edition that we'll talk about later on has the green LEDs. That's the one that's illuminating that bush over there in the corner with the green LED there. And there's also the reasons why it's green instead of red, but again, more on that in just a second. The next piece is they've improved what's called Rewa Drive, which is the entire gearbox internal of this. So there is a full gearbox below this display that's driving these hands. It's not just simply like, picturesque hands are. These are real actual hands moving around and they have a real actual coating that is illuminated. And they said with this Revo Drive update, they've aimed to go ahead and improve some of the durability aspects of it as well as the precision aspects of it long term. They did note that most of these changes are incredibly minor and something that you wouldn't generally see. Uh, note that in the user interface, you can go ahead and do a calibration. So you can do a calibration at any point in time and fix the hand alignment in case it is for some reason offset. Likewise, it'll automatically do that as well behind the scenes. Like if you were to just slam this to the ground right now, it should trigger that realignment or calibration check uh, automatically. But I'm not gonna do that right now here because I've already got like one, two, three, I got like six Phoenixes out there right now. I gotta find at the end of this whole thing, hoping those flashlights don't turn off. I don't want one more wash to dig up. Speaking of which, if you're finding this video interesting, just simply watch it all the way through. That's the only thing the YouTube gods care about. And it really would help with this video and the channel quite a bit. Now, the next tech item that's new here is the inclusion of multi-GNS or multi-frequency uh, or dual-band GPS into the Instinct 3 crossover AMOLED. That is, by the way, a handful of a name to say. Speaking of which, that's actually not its real name. Its official name, by the way, is the Instinct crossover AMOLED, uh, no three. Uh, Garmin said they went back and forth on whether not to include the three because it is based on the Instinct 3 series, as we'll talk about in just a second, but ultimately decided to ditch the three because they didn't have a two in between. It didn't stop them on the Phoenix 4, by the way. There is no Phoenix 4. In any case, as for that multi-GNS capability, this will give you better accuracy in tougher environments. So think like cities, New York City, for example, or in the mountains up against cliff falls and whatnot. That said, as I've noted in the past couple of years with Garmin's latest satellite technology, there is very little difference to be had in almost all scenarios. Even in New York City, just a few weeks ago, I took a bunch of both dual band and non-dual band watches, and there was virtually no difference between those two. Now, the next difference is the inclusion or switching to an AMOLED display, as I mentioned earlier on. This does increase the display size quite dramatically from 0.9 inches all the way up to 1.2 inches. That may only seem like a third of an inch, but in a unit this size, that is a big difference. Uh, and so with that, you also get things like the inclusion of uh, the red shift capability that you see right there. Uh, that's an option that you have at nighttime if you don't want the full AMOLED display. Though keeping in mind when you're sleeping, it goes into the sleep mode and it has a much dimmer state. I just turn this on here because it looks way cooler than the regular AMOLED display would look right now in this light. So that is something that is here that wasn't in the past on the MIP based display. Now, from a battery life standpoint, here is a full battery chart that you can see right there. Of course, there's always trade-offs when it comes to AMOLED versus MIP-based, but I think in most cases, the battery life that you're seeing here for the AMOLED side is still incredibly strong and covers the vast majority of scenarios out there. 
Likewise, from a display standpoint, I had no issues at all seeing this display in bright sunny conditions. I live on a sunny Mediterranean island that you see right there, uh, and no problems in bright sunlight conditions. This is the same screen technology as used on the Instinct 3, though they've actually tuned it to be very slightly dimmer, uh, so it pops better with those hands there. Uh, but it's not the newer screen technology seen on something like the Venue Series, 4Runner 570, 970, etc., which I think is overkill anyway. So in some ways, this is, I think is a, a better display for most scenarios, so it's not burning quite as much battery. Next up, from a weight standpoint, it did decrease the weight just slightly. You can see the full weight listing at the bottom there. However, in many ways, the big ticket item here isn't the AMOLED display or anything else. It's the fact that it gets all of the Garmin Instinct 3 features. And there are a lot of software features here. So just to kind of walk through some of these really quick, I got my handy dandy notes. Otherwise, there are just too many to forget about. First off, you're going to see that metal uh, bezel ring that goes around the outside right there. That is a part of like artistic design, but also part of the satellite antenna. Uh, so the GPS antenna, that is the portion of it there. In the case of the crossover, they actually decided to expose more of that. Notably, that metal ring there actually goes all the way around and it goes beneath that uh, polymer so basically plastic, uh, if you will, uh, bezel on the top there. Next up, they've added training load focus. They've added a training load ratio. They've also added full multi-sport and auto transitions, a triathlon auto transitions. Likewise, I've added nap detection as well as sleep coach. And then also announced today by Garmin is both health status as well as lifestyle logging. So basically competing with what Whoop has on their journal. Uh, those features are totally free to everyone on Garmin Connect. No Connect Plus bits there. I think I'm gonna feel a little guilty or something. Maybe just want to like quell the bad press. I don't know. But anyway, I'll, I'll take the gift there for now, anyways. Uh, in addition to that, they've got the muscle map there for strength workouts as well as the strength workout animations. Also, they've got a Garmin shirt that's super handy for sharing course files, for example, at a trailhead without any of the connectivity. Just direct watch to watch sharing, of course, and other types of files. And they've added Garmin Messenger capabilities. So uh, if you have your phone nearby, you can go ahead and use this and pair it up to the Garmin Messenger app there. Uh, and then likewise on the in reach side, if you have an in reach device nearby, you can do the same as well. Now, just to be super clear, there is no LTE capability in this watch, neither is there any Wi Fi, and there's certainly no satellite capability like we've seen on the Phoenix 8 Pro series announced a couple weeks back. Finally, on the big hit list there, they also added the large font mode. So that allows you to increase the font sizes if your eyes are a little bit more well-aged, a little bit better vintage, if you will. Uh, you can go ahead and increase those font size. Uh, like in the past, Garmin Pay is still there as well for doing contactless payments. And then all the additional sport profiles that you would get from the Instinct 3, there is just a boatload more sport profiles. Those are all there as well now too. I'll put the full list of all the sport profiles at the bottom right now, just so you can see them. Maybe I'll even just scroll the sport profile list on the screen right now just for funsies. Okay, so with all those Instinct 3 features out of the way, there's one important thing here. There's actually two watches. There's the Instinct 3 Crossover AMOLED Edition, but also the Instinct 3 Crossover AMOLED Tactical Edition. What that does is essentially takes all the tactical features and all those functionality bits that came from the Instinct 3 Tactical uh, unit that was launched back in May or so, like three or four months after uh, the base edition, and ports them into this crossover type edition. Oh, we just lost a watch. Literally the Instinct 3 Tactical AMOLED fell off the rock. So uh, it, the green light's gone. One second. Can't have this kind of set. You had one job, little watch. Okay. I think that looks a little better now. So what is that Instinct 3 Tactical bring with it? Well, there's really like six or seven core features here. I'm going to run through them, but keep in mind, if you want all the details on these, like all the nitty gritty details, you can check out my full video up in the corner there, there somewhere uh, that goes into all the details on the Instinct 3 Tactical because it's the exact same features just on this watch as well. The very first item of note is it uses the dual white and green LEDs. That's the green light that you see right there. Uh, and that basically allows it to be more night vision goggle friendly. Uh, it is night vision goggle friendly. You can toggle that in the menu options there. Uh, and that'll go ahead and basically reduce the brightness of it uh, and shift it to a green light. You can have an entire debate about red versus green light there. Uh, but for people that have tested Garmin's green light variant, they say it works largely just fine. Now, the next bit here is the stealth mode. This simply turns off all connectivity. So it turns off Bluetooth and GPS. Again, there is no Wi-Fi in the Instinct 3 lineup, so it's not going to turn that off. Uh, and with that lack of Wi-Fi, there's also no music, by the way, just in case you're wondering about that. The next feature is the kill switch feature. This is designed to reset everything on the watch and basically delete all the content on there and pull it back to factory default. So if you're in a scenario where you needed to delete all the stuff off there, you could do that. As I talked about in my Instinct 3 tactical video, I've got some technical uh, questions on that uh, based on my expertise in this space a little bit. So uh, go check out that video for my thoughts on that. 
Likewise, there's also the Jump Master mode. That's if you want to jump out of a perfectly good airplane, you can now plan how to do that and hopefully find your way back down to the ground. After that, there's the Apply Ballistic Solver. Uh, so this piece is loaded on the watch, but not unlocked. Uh, it is unlocked on some of the higher end watches where you pay an extra couple grand, but in this case, you got to unlock that separately if you wanted to. Uh, likewise, there's also the Applied Ballistics Quantum App Integration. So this is a separate phone and tablet-based app that will integrate with the Garmin Instinct 3 Tactical Series, uh, as well as other Garmin devices out there. And then finally, there's additional Instinct 3 Tactical Watch faces that are also here on the Instinct 3 Crossover AMOLED Tactical there I got, got it, addition as well. But we have to talk about the elephant in the room, right? I hope there's not any elephants out here right now, but we gotta talk about this, which is the price. The price has jumped a lot. So the retail price for the Instinct crossover before was $399. It is now sitting at an astonishing $649. And I get that all of the Instinct 3 lineup went up a bunch and all of Garmin's watches went up a bunch, but Given the fact that the Instinct crossover was the one that was on sale like constantly, like absolutely all the time bargain basement prices, and in fact they even permanently reduced the list price, not just put it on sale, uh, pretty quickly after launch, telling you that maybe the original price was too high? So I'm surprised they're trying to like do this again, maybe they, they know something we don't know, we'll find out over time. In any case, as for that Instinct 3 Tactical, that'll set you back yet another 100 bucks to 749 bucks for an Instinct 3 watch with no maps. Like, holy moly. Uh, okay. The thing is, at the end of the day, we're just all along on the ride on the great Garmin pricing experiment of 2025. And frankly, I think Garmin's on that same ride and they're not really sure how it's gonna end either. In some categories like this one with the crossover watch, there is no competitor. Like, let's be frank, there's no competitor out there that has the same Instinct features, but has those analog watch hands versus the base Instinct 3 watch, there are a ton of competitors in that ballpark. We've seen Corliss with the Nomad recently, for example, in that Instinct-ish looking watch. I mean, like it's basically a duplicate of the Garmin Instinct lineup, uh, but so the Corliss branding, a lot cheaper and full on map. But with the crossover, again, it's in its own bucket there. Ultimately, we're gonna have to see how things work over the next little while. I think if it gets in November and December and Garmin's already reducing the price of the crossover, that's probably a sign they priced it incorrectly. But if the pricing holds through January, February, whatever, then maybe they stuck the landing. I don't know, we'll have to see. Nonetheless, if we set aside all the pricing, I think this is an interesting little watch. I've always found the crossover like a cool watch to look at. Maybe not my preferred watch personally, like as what my daily bride would be day in and day out. I think it's kind of fun to wear. The color schemes they have there that showed throughout the video here, you know, it's gonna be personal preference. I think at times this yellow and poopish color watch looks pretty cool other times like when my wife commented on it she she wasn't so thrilled with that critical color scheme but again to each their own ultimately it has the instinct 3 at its core there is a lot of fans of that watch and so folks that were looking for a crossover with the instinct 3 features now you've got that now at the beginning of the video i did mention there's a few reasons why i'm out here the first of course is the nifty fun but that it's got on this watch uh, but there's a more important reason why i'm out here at 1 46 in the morning filming this particular video, uh, which is the fact that there is a boatload of things coming up today, and I've only got so many hours in a day, and this is when I got this video done. And there's probably a few more things I'll shake out of my bag as well over the next 24 hours. Okay, I'll give you a tour of the whole set real quick. We got one uh, Instinct 3 down there, AMOLED. We have the new Instinct 3 crossover down there with the green light. We have some sort of Phoenix over here. I don't know what that is. It looks like a Phoenix uh, Pro. Look, I don't know. I got my run off flights here. Uh, Phoenix 8 Pro is down there. And over here, don't trip in the bushes. Here we go. Uh, we have Tree Watch number one. This looks, I think, like the... Let's see, what is this? This is just a regular Phoenix 8. And then up there, we got the Phoenix 8 Micro LED. Phoenix 8 Pro Micro LED. And then over here, across this tree, so lighting this tree up, like garden style, we have... Uh, another Phoenix 8 Pro as well. Uh, there we go. It's getting all excited about his optical heart rate tensor. So there you go. A complete set tour of the bushes in the woods. And uh, good news. No wolves or any other large creatures have attacked me yet. Uh, supposedly there actually are a wild boar here. I haven't seen them yet, but... Um... Yeah, we'll leave before that happens. Wait, there's one more watch. There's the one that's actually illuminating me. Here we go. You can see it right there. I don't know what this guy is. Phoenix 8 something or other. Uh, Phoenix 8 Pro, I think. So, there you go. Now we're done for realsies.